Corey, uh, officially welcome. Thank you for doing this uh, workshop with us. We're really excited. Uh, we've been put, uh, letting everybody know uh, that this is going to be happening, and we'll be live here in the Facebook group here really soon. So there will be a recording available after this. We'll make sure to post it in the Facebook group so that uh, if you can't attend the whole entire time, guys, you can go back, review it. Uh, Corey's got some really good things that I'm excited to, for him to share more of his story and really how he's been able to scale and grow, not just there in his local market, but he's all over the country now. And uh, he obviously had some bumps and bruises along the way in order to do that. And uh, this is a great opportunity, you guys, for everyone to be able to learn from Corey and learn from his mistakes as well as his wins and how we can uh, kind of maybe model it after what you're currently doing. So I'm just going to kind of turn the time over to you, Corey, and uh, we'll go from there. That's awesome, man. Well, thank you so much for having me today. I'm truly blessed to be here. Let me share my screen. And I've actually uh, prepared a PowerPoint uh, for this call. So Great. can you guys see my screen okay? Yes. Awesome. So thanks again, Brighton. I appreciate it. Like he said, uh, I'm Corey Geary. Um, I'm operating out of here, out of Phoenix, Arizona, the guru capital of the world for wholesalers. Um, I'm gonna do a small presentation today, just you know, kind of my story on how I got into business and exactly how I transitioned, you know, along the way to this nationwide model that we're doing, and just how we're doing 20, 30 deals a month continuously, um, and like like clockwork. So, and how I created this machine. So, um, right here, this is my team, guys. And one of the biggest things is when you're growing your business and trying to create this machine. You got to make sure you have A plus rock star team members. And the way I'm able to do this and keep my team members on board, engaged, and not leaving is I put the diamond handcuffs on them. And by that meaning, I allow them to partake investments with me. So I let them flip with me. I let them do oil and gas with me, which was what another investment strategy I have. And I let them do mobile home parks with me. So, and we reward them really well for the nationwide wholesaling model. So the, to me, they are partners in my business. They're not employees. Employee is a bad word. You know, uh, to me, I, I like to call them team members or partners. So I'm, at, I'm there in the middle, I'm the CEO. You got Sylvester, there's a left in the green shirt. He is my lead disposition manager slash COO. He's running the company when I'm away on events, masterminds, trips. He's able to take care of the operation when I'm home with my newborn baby. He's been able to hit the show run uh, for you to let me know. I just had a baby on Saturday. Um, so you got Josh and Eve, who is my TC and junior dispo. Josh is there in the white hat, white shirt. You got Eve in the red. And then you got mine, Nathan and Rich. Uh, Nathan is to my right there or my left, actually. And then Rich, the one with the tattoos. And then Maya there is the one sitting down next to the dog. Um, she looks innocent, but man, she is a shark. She is a closer. I um, mean, she'll cut your throat for $10, um, so, but she's amazing. So you got Nakia, who's right in the middle, and she's my in-house realtor. I do do a lot of local fix and flipping, and she's the one who lists those flips for me. So um, what we do is we primarily, primarily do nationwide wholesaling. We do do fix and flips locally. We do a lot of JV deals with a lot of other investors here locally, and we do some creative and novations. Novations has become one of our biggest strategies on the nationwide model. And I'll get into that a little bit more later on why it's been such a game changer in our business. Um, who we are, you know, I'm Corey Geary, the owner of True Top Offer and Prestige Property Group. Um, I'm a licensed realtor actually here in my market, I, although I do not use my license at all anymore. When I first got into real estate, I thought I had to be licensed. I thought it'd be better for my fix and flips. Well, I was wrong. Um, I used to be a blackjack dealer at Wild Horse Pass Casino here. I was a dealer for 17 years before I transitioned into real estate. I started off as a fix and flipper, and now we're doing the nationwide wholesale model. Um, but I'll start uh, how I got into real estate. So when I was working at the casino, we made pretty good money because, you know, you make your money from tips. And I was doing about, you know, 120, 140 grand a year uh, being a blackjack dealer. I got way too complacent with my job and I stayed in it too long, you know, before I transitioned out. Um, and I was literally at home watching that show Flip or Flop with Tarek Al Musa that, you know, everyone kind of knows about on the HGTV channel. And I was sitting there with my girlfriend at the time, who was a part time realtor and also a blackjack dealer. And she knew I had some money saved up. And she's like, hey, why don't you flip a house so I can list it? 
I was like, I don't know, why don't I flip a house? It seems easy enough that it takes 30 minutes and they make $80,000. Um, they make it look super simple. Um, so what I, you know, the next morning I was actually running around my neighborhood because I do my morning runs and I saw one of those signs that said fix and flip, buy price 250, ARV uh, 350, something to that nature. I stopped on my morning run. I saw from a sign of God to tell me that this is something I need to do since we had just talked about it the night before. I called that phone number. It was from New, New West, not New Western, uh, Net Worth Realty. And I bought that house. It took me six months and I made $8,000. And this is actually the house that I bought. Um, this was the after product when we were done. You know, we didn't know what we we're doing at all. We we're just flying by the seat of our pants, you know, and the contractor took forever to get it done. And, you know, we didn't lose money on that property. During this time, I'm going to RIA's, local RIA's networking uh, for free. And I've met some wholesalers. And so on my second deal, I bought a, a deal from a wholesaler. I made $20,000 on that deal. It went pretty smooth. On my third deal, though, I thought I knew what I was doing. I thought I was like, you know, have this figured out. Um, bought four deals all at once. And when I bought those deals, we lost our previous contractor with a hire a new one. I didn't bet this contractor whatsoever. And we bought these four houses and I lost $240,000 because he took us to the cleaners. He pretty much saw a mark on our head and he was you know, billing us, invoicing us for work being done. I was working at the casino at nights. I was not following up with him. And he just took all the money from us. And it's not only I lost the rehab money, but then all the money, the down payment to buy the houses, all the holding costs had all equal to be about 240 grand. Um, during that time, you know, that was my life savings, my 401k money from the casino and my previous flip money. I lost it all. And I didn't want to give up on real estate. And so I was like, I was thinking to myself, well, I wonder how these wholesalers get their deals. So I literally Googled on, on Google, how do wholesalers get deals? And, uh, can any of you guys guess who might've came up? Um, well, this man right here, Mr. Sean Terry. So I bought his course, uh, the, the, the. Um, flipping academy or whatever it's called i started you know doing everything that he was teaching i did banded signs at the direct mail and it took me 10 months and i got my first wholesale deal and i sold that deal to the wholesaler who i was buying my fix and flip properties from and made ten thousand dollars and i was like okay there's something to this um from that point on i got into telecommunications and started doing a lot of cold calling a lot of text a lot of rbm and that's how I kind of got into the wholesale world. I built out a call floor in my living room with a bunch of cubicles and hired people to come in and cold call for me so I could get leads so I can go out and close deals. Um, this is also one of my other mentors, Joe Dillon. He taught me to run my business like a business, um, to track my KPIs. At the end of the day, if you don't know your numbers, you don't have a business, you have a hobby. So as you're scaling your business, guys, make sure you're tracking your KPIs, cost per deal, cost per lead, how, what your average deal size is, how many leads per contract, and et cetera. And manage your books. That was very hard for me to learn. Um, first wholesale deal, here we go again. I made 10 grand on this property. Um, here's the call floor I built out in my living room. This is just a fun slide I'd like to keep in here to show exactly what I was doing. Here was my whiteboard right here there in the back. It was all the current deals we had in our local market. Um, this became a problem because um, <clears throat> having the, the call floor in my house, the HOA would complain every single day because they thought like I was having keg parties with all these cars in front of my house. So eventually I had to get an office and move the whole business into a commercial setting. Um, and at that, you know, at that point I was still working in the casino it was hard because I was doing this all day long and working in the casino all night and not sleeping. So it was brain damage. And so was the call floor because you're managing employees. They're just cold calling for you. So eventually uh, we ended up scratching the cold call model and grew into PPC and other type of, uh, you know, inbound strategies like social media, um, which uh, Amplify is helping us with. Um, so here's the office that we're in now. Some of my team members that are working with us now that now the only people that are working with us are acquisitions, dispositions, transaction coordinator, and then a realtor. No more cold callers. Um, but let's talk about PPC a bit. This is how I grew my business nationwide. Um, through networking and masterminds last year, the beginning of last year, 
you know, I was really looking to scale. I was doing about eight to 10 deals a month locally. And I met a few people who were doing this nationwide model from PPC and doing deals in every state virtually. It was, it was very difficult for me to grasp my head around it because at the time I was going to all the appointments in person, sitting belly to belly with the sellers, getting, you know, repair estimates that I would figure out, you know, exactly how much we got to take off for. And so it was a hard shift for us because everything virtually now, you got to lock up the deals over the phone. You got to comp the properties, you know, virtually. You got to try to figure out what your repair cost is. And it, it took a learning curve for us in the beginning out of every five contracts, maybe only one would close just because we were locking deals up too high. We couldn't find buyers. And it was, it was just, it was problematic at first, but PPC is a great way to transition into that nationwide model because literally I could just turn on a state with a click of a button and I'll have leads coming into me. Um, with telecommunications, you think about it, you got to pull new data, you got to skip trace that data and you got to get new cold callers, Maybe get a new VA to run your texting uh, and set up RVM campaigns. And it's, it's a lot more work uh, to scale that type of business model than it is with PPC, where I just go in and turn a state on. Now, in the beginning, when I was doing PPC, I didn't know how to do it. I was learning. I did a few courses on it and I was getting cost per conversions around $700. So my leads were very expensive. Um, but through masterminding and networking and trial and error, I've kind of cracked the code on Google where our cost per conversion was around 700 and to date now our cost per conversion is $43. So every lead coming into my uh, company, I'm paying $43 for. So you can see here when I took this picture, you know, we spent about $103,000 on this campaign, total of $203,000. And this was last year or so. Um, here, you can see my cost per conversion is $42.33. $42 we use a strategy called maximize conversions. Let me touch on this a little bit. So everyone is teaching PPC, to everyone who knows about it, to control the cost per click, to control the keyword, exact match keyword, and control the marketplace. You know, dial in, like say, just hit Phoenix. Well, the more you restrict Google, the higher your cost per conversion is. By controlling your cost per click, you're not letting Google take the reins. If you, view, if you put your conversion tracking onto your landing page and then link it in with Google and do this strategy called maximize conversions, Google will literally learn through conversions what your lookalike audience is and start showing your ads to lookalike audience for the broad match keywords. And that will, that will bring down your cost per conversion to where I'm at now. And that's how we've been able to get this $42.33 cost per conversion. Um, Google is smarter than us. Don't try to control Google. Let Google do its work. They have over 2,000 data points in every single person in the United States. So they know when people are going to move or sell their house before they even know it. So they'll start showing their, your ads to them. So this is how we've been able to utilize Google and really lean on them for uh, lead flow. Um, here you can see we're in multiple states. We're now up to 42 states nationwide, and we hit it state by state when we're turning markets on. And what I'll do is I'll turn a state on, I'll run it for two months, I'll look at my KPIs, like what my cost per lead is in that state, how many deals we got out of that state, what's my average deal size, how many deals did we close? And then I would also talk to my acquisition team and be like, hey guys, how do you guys like playing in Ohio? Oh, we love it, you know, we can lock up deals very easily there, you know, we're selling deals, we're making about 10 grand, you know, they'll tell me a lot of feedback that I don't know because I'm not working in the weeds anymore. And so I take all those, that, all that information, I decide whether or not I'm going to keep a state on or off. So doing that method, I've grown to 42 states, there's eight states that we don't play in, that I don't like, the KPIs just don't work for us. Some of those states are like West Virginia, the Dakotas. Um, so let me move on from there. Oh, sorry about that, guys. Uh, went backwards. Um, so here's some of the houses we've locked up all over the United States. Um, and you know, the leads come in and from PPC, my acquisitions, they comp it. And then they reach out virtually over the phone with the seller and negotiate, you know, the contract. Um, this one here is a funny one. It looks like a corkboard house. And I think we made like $26,000 on this, on this particular property. Um, the way we sell our properties, I wanted to throw this in there is by two methods. One is through this company called InvestorLift. InvestorLift has taken all the buyers 
nationwide and put them onto one platform. And basically you can blast your deal out in that state and all those buyers in that state will see your deal. So it's been a great tool uh, of us learning, you know, using to sell our deals. Cause that was one of our biggest problems when we first started this model is we couldn't find buyers. You know, we were going to realtor.com scraping the first five pages of realtors who represented buyers in that marketplace, building a spreadsheet up and then cold calling and texting them. We'd also pull the flippers out of prop stream, cold call and text them. So, and then this guy named Robert Winsley reached out to me in the middle of last year. And he told me about the products that he was creating and I jumped on board and it's been great. Now, this is not the end all save all. The, the other piece of the puzzle that we use to sell our deals is we list them on the MLS. So in our contract, we have language that allows us to list a property for equitable interest. We also send an attorney, in fact, every time with our contract where they, the seller will sign that we're allowed to list the property with the MLS and set um, offers on market. So between those two uh, methods is how we sell the majority of our deals. Um, here's some, uh, a portfolio check that I, I closed out in uh, Sacramento. We made $96,000 on this deal. Here's my whiteboard. You can see we get a lot of deals. We keep the, uh, we like to have, we're very visual in the office. So we keep a whiteboard, all the deals written down. Plus we keep all the deals in our CRM too. But when we're doing our dispositions meeting, we're just hammering it down right through the, uh, the deals in the whiteboard, finding out what it's gonna take to get the deal to move to the next step without one, you know, one step closer to closing. Um, so let's talk about innovations now a little bit. So innovation is a strategy um, that we are utilizing in our business now that has been a game changer because what we found by going nationwide, we're getting a lot of these deals that are coming in where the properties are in good condition or at least livable condition. Sellers are um, still not, want, they're wanting cash offer and convenience um, and they're in rural markets. So there's not a lot of investor activity. Um, so as long as you can go on the MLS and see that there's MLS activity, you can no bait that deal. And what no bait is, is it's the ninja move where we lock up a deal direct to seller and we list it on the market to conventional FHA and VA buyers. Now we could do a whole presentation on this one model, but this has been game changer in our business. So basically we're getting the contract from them. We're sending a novation and identification agreement over to the seller. And then we're listing it in the MLS. <clears throat> accepting conventional offers, signing on the seller's behalf because we have the attorney in fact in place and then conducting the title with the attorney in fact on their behalf. And then we, re we record a lien against the property, which is our payoff. So any conventional FHA and VA financing going to pay, pay off will always approve any lien payoffs. A mortgage is a lien, a mechanics lien. So they see our lien and we're automatically paid off and they approve it. Where if you try to sign the property to a conventional buyer, a lot of the, the, the financing companies will push that back. So we, re, we resolve that with this uh, one instrument. And I've spent thousands of dollars, you know, getting all this paperwork drafted up by attorneys to help, to help us conduct our innovations. Um, so we're doing this nationwide now. We probably have, a, I think we have 24 innovations currently on the board. Our average novation fee is higher than our average assignment fee. Uh, assignment, average assignment fees are around 17,000. Our average, average novation fees are around 30,000. Um, you get a lot less pushback from your buyers because you're selling to an end user. So you're usually getting bidding wars on the property, especially in this market that we're in now, where if, as an, if you sell to an investor, they're gonna try to beat you up on price. So we're finding that we're having a lot bigger spreads with this one model and it's allowing us to get these deals done in the more rural markets. Plus it also allows us to get deals done when the seller wants more money than what a wholesale cash offer can do. You know, for example, the ARV is 350 and your cash offer is 250. Maybe they need 300 because they have a mortgage. Maybe grandma passed and they got to pay for a funeral. They have specific needs. They, they, they have to have that money. You know, and they're having a lot of conversations with investors and what these investors are pitching to them is creative financing, you know, but we, we, we love that because we'll tell the seller, hey, listen, we're not going to ask you to take your money over 10, 20 or 30 years. We're going to get your money in two to three months. And they always go with us over like, if they're talking to somebody who's pitching creative financing. So that is a novation model in a nutshell. Like I said, we could do a whole presentation just on novations. Here's some checks that we've collected on novations. As you can see, they're much larger, larger on average than the wholesale assignment fees are. 
for us. So that is kind of in a nutshell. I know we've kind of just went over the 30,000 foot overview there. I would love to you know, open up for Q&A if we can, exactly how we do conduct the business. Now we're always looking for new inbound marketing channels. This is how we came upon Amplify. Amplify has done great in our business on bringing new leads in. I think we have four deals right now on the whiteboard that are from Amplify. And I do believe one or two of them are Novations. So if you guys aren't doing Novations, look more into it on growing that because not a lot of people are doing it. It's not like it's like what wholesaling was 15 or 20 years ago. So it's literally we're paving the path, you know, trailblazing this model. And there will be a day when people will catch on and it's going to get a lot more competitive. Um, but right now it's great. We even have a title company. Uh, it's called Tier One Title. I talked to the owner and I broke down exactly step by step how we're doing novation, sent him all the instruments that we're using to conduct the novation transaction. And he approved us to do novations in all 50 states. So we no longer have the title issue where literally if you send an ovation to most title companies, they're going to be like, what is this? We don't know what you're doing. You look like you're scamming the seller. Um, it's like, like I said, like assignments were, you know, 15, 20 years ago. Now title companies have gotten a lot better at, you know, accepting assignments, but you still get some of those title companies in rural markets. So like, we don't do assignments. Um, so that this has been game changer for us having that title company in place. So um, I can open up a q and A. I I know it's kind of short, the 30,000 foot overview. Um, is, you know, anybody got anything? So yeah, okay, I got one here. So you never actually close on the property. Basically what happens is you can't wholesale it. We never close on the property. That is correct. Um, if you can't, if, it, if the wholesale price doesn't work, a novation price might work. As long as the property is in livable condition, um, and you can get uh, some time, meaning time like, you know, maybe two to three months, and they don't mind signing this master paperwork. Now, when you're conducting these novations, the key piece is to be very upfront with your sellers in the beginning. So the conversation when we're pitching this sounds like this, hey, Mr. Seller, unfortunately, we're not your buyer, because as, bu as investors, we need to make a marginal profit. But with also that being, with that being said, as investors, we are great at bringing buyers to the table to pay top dollar because we do a lot of fix and flips. Now, if we're able to partner with a buyer and get your asking price net to you, and we take care of all the realtor fees, all the title fees, and you just got to sit back and collect your check, would you be interested in doing that? And that's how we kind of transition the conversation over to them when we're pitching innovation. And then we're completely transparent about what we're doing. We're gonna be putting it on the MLS. We're gonna be bringing some buyers through as for a walkthrough. And in being that we're so transparent, we get a lot of less, a lot less deals falling apart. Cause when you're doing wholesaling, a lot of years, you, you're keeping the seller in the dark when you're trying to sign that, you sell that contract and they don't know. It. And then you're, you try not to tell the buyer what you bought the property for. So there's all this gray area. We're in novations, it's completely upfront. The seller knows that we're novating the contract and then the realtors are bringing their buyers through. So there's not this weird, crazy friction all the time on the, the virtual model. So it's been just an absolute blessing in our business. Um, how do you present the novation approach to the seller? Yep, I just described that a little bit. What are your top three markets and why? Our top three markets right now are Florida, California, and Washington because the spreads are so big and they're so uh, easy to work with. Now, California has some tricky uh, parts about it with all the, the tenant friendly laws. So sometimes we get stuck there, but um, the spreads are so big in California that the juice is worth a squeeze. Um, how do you get your leads? Uh, all our leads are coming right now from PPC and Amplify. So our CRM is that's all it is. We will only want inbound leads because outbound leads, when you're cold calling, texting, and you're doing RVM, when you're calling these people, they're like, you called me, just give me an offer. The, the mindset of the seller is di different. They're not really motivated. So you're following up a lot more, digging through a lot more dirt before you find the gold. Where on PPC, the mindset of the seller is they want to sell now. They, they're, they're, they're ready to go. And so that's what's been so great about it is that my acquisitions don't have to dig to so many leads. I think when I was doing cold calling, especially here, it was here local, I was at 72 leads per contract on cold calling. Right now, we're at 17 leads per contract on the PPC model because the mindset of the seller is they, they do want to sell. 
Regarding novations, what's the website? We don't, we don't have a website uh, to explain novations. We do have coaching and mentorship that we offer and we teach people how to do a, you know, nationwide A to Z wholesaling with PPC as your main marketing piece and novations as your main exit strategy. How, do you, how did you find out how to do PPC? So I went through some courses at first. There's a lot of people out there teaching it. Um, but those courses were teaching it all wrong. They were teaching me how to control my cost per click, teaching me to do exact match keywords, you know, be market specific. And just do going to different masterminds and networking. I met a couple of people who were doing this nationwide model and, and, and doing the right way. They were, they were doing Google the right way. And so like I literally flew to their office, learned how to do it, paid them obviously for their time. And that's how, you know, and then also through trial and error and split testing campaigns, seeing what works better and, and what, you know, what doesn't work. So is your title company open to others use it or efforts innovation? Yes, our title company is open to all investors. They're tier one title. Um, you could message me on Facebook after this or even email me at cgproperties at truerealty.com. I can introduce you, um, but they're, they're very wholesale friendly you know, novation friendly, anything that you want to transact. Um, tell us more about your mentoring. The mentoring is an ongoing coaching group that we have. Uh, we do two Zoom calls a month. I got 30 members right now, and it's just teaching the whole nationwide model, including PPC, including novations, down to like if you need to learn acquisitions, dispositions and how we sell the deal and everything in between. Um, and then you get to fly to my office. You can sit with me you know, for a full day, watch me work, watch how the, the whole machine kind of conducts the transactions. You get, you know, put it in the Facebook group and uh, it, it's, it's been a really good group. I've only been doing it though for about four months. So um, we're, we're really new at it, but it's working great. So I'll have a website done up here soon that you guys will be able to go to. But for now, if you want to just look me up on Facebook, Corey Geary, and you can just DM me and then I can tell you more about, you know, anything we got going on. Um, What's covered, if I explain that. When doing a virtual wholesaling out of market, what are your lessons learned to make sure not to lose your shirt or get cut out by the local investors? Investors, first thing uh, about not losing your shirt, well, one mistake that I made is when I switched to the virtual model nationwide, I turned off my local model. It was the biggest mistake I ever made because that was what, what was paying the bills. It is what was keeping me fed. And when I did that, I turned everything off. We lost our local deal flow. I went immediately in the red. And I ran in the red for three months before we were able to start monetizing the new model. Anybody trying to get into this, I would recommend to make this an arm of your business. You know, start slow. Keep your local model on. Maybe turn a little PPC on, maybe get with Amplify, get Amplify bringing you in some leads from some virtual markets and start slow and scale up slowly. And then you can scale down your local model slowly, but don't make the mistake I did and just don't jump right into it, you know, when you first get going. Um, hopefully that answers the question. Um, I think there was another one here, uh, local investors and buyers. Well, with Novations, that's not a problem. Uh, with Novations, since we're, since we're selling retail, we never have the problem of getting snaked. Where on our wholesale deals, that is still a problem. Now, the way we do get around that is just by prepping the seller. And we let the seller know, say, hey, Mr. Seller, we're going to be bringing some investors through, you know, some financial partners. Please don't discuss pricing because we're telling them a higher price because we're trying to embed our remodel costs. So that way that eliminates that. And then we're letting the buyer know, say, hey, Mr. Buyer, you know, seller's in distress. Please don't ask any questions. Any questions, please call us and direct it towards us. You know, we're obviously wholesaling this and we're trying to make a marginal, marginal profit. We don't want to spook them. We've also placed memorandum of contract and clouded title for your interest and our interest. So we're letting them know that we are clouding titles so that it helps try to mitigate the snaking. Does it always work? No. It does not, but it has, it does cut it down tremendously. But like I said, novations, you don't have that issue at all. Um, uh, how much do you spend per month on marketing? Right now we're at 25 K a month on PPC is what we're spending. We're always looking for new strategies on how to get the overhead down. So we're always looking for new, 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 
uh, cheaper lead flow. And uh, Amplify has been a, a true blessing in our business for helping us bring in more inbound leads um, off of PPC. Um, what's your company name? Uh, the company name that buys houses is Prestige Property Group. Um, the company name for the coaching and mentorship is New Age Wholesaling. I'm interested in mentoring. Yeah, hit me up on Facebook. Just DM me. Follow me on Facebook anyway, because I'm always dropping content about exactly how we're conducting this business. What's your charge for doing novations? Novations, it, it, it all depends. So basically what you're doing, when you're talking to the seller, all you got to back out is you got to back out the buyer broke realtor fees, the title fees, what you think the inspection cost is to fix up the property. So you're just guesstimating. And then now your fee. So, and depending on how much you're trying to get your fee, and obviously you're trying to negotiate as low as possible, we want to make at least as much as a realtor would listing the property. So 3%. So if we're making at least 3% out of our fee, we'll probably push forward with the novation if we think the property is in decent condition. Now we try to have a lot bigger spread than that because a lot of times you're going through the inspection period and that inspector is going to tell you to do other things that's going to cost you money and needs to come out of that spread. So just be extra mindful of the condition of the property when you're uh, conducting these novations, because that is very important. Sometimes you'll come in, you might have to put a new roof on the house. That has happened to us. But sometimes I might come in, we just had one last week. Literally, it was an FHA uh, buyer and inspector, and they said, you just need to put a stove in the house. We put a stove in the house. We made $42,000 on that deal. So you're going to have both ends of the spectrum. Just be mindful going in with a conversation with the seller. Not always, not always they're going to be completely truthful for you with you. So make sure you have enough spread built in if they're not, if a problem arises. Um, do you drive them money up front to vacate the house? Sometimes, yes, uh, we have done that. We have fronted money to move, have them move. We've done post possessions. You can do all that. Same thing you kind of do with wholesale. And then we've also done uh, where we've paid their rent, not rent, paid their mortgage, sorry. So like we just had one right now that we're getting ready to close on. It, the, the, the biggest pain point why they couldn't wait two or three months is because they couldn't afford the mortgage no more. So we're like, okay, well, if we can pay the mortgage on your behalf, can we do this route with you? And they agreed. So we paid the mortgage and we were able to conduct the transaction. Okay. Um, anyone else got any other questions they want to hammer me with? Novations. You fix, you fix minor or major repairs for the seller, do novations and get the back end. That is correct. But we try to stay away from the big fix and flips on novations. Um, it, you, can, you can do a novation flip. And we've done that here in our local market. But I just don't want a bunch of capital out there nationwide while I'm trying to conduct this. If 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 the property's in in uh, this you know need in need of a lot of repairs, we're probably just going to go ahead and just try to wholesale or offer that wholesale pricing and conduct it as a wholesale transaction. This is mainly for if the property is in livable condition. Now it doesn't have to be anywhere near HGTV style. It can be. It just has to be livable and pass the inspection. So we'll let the inspector tell us everything we need to fix on the property to for the financing contingencies. What main objections do you hear? You know, a lot of objections are the time frame. You know, because they're wanting their money now. You know, they want the cash offer, and that's why they called. Or explain to them, you know, we can give you your money now. Here is the cash offer option. Or we can get you more money by doing it this way. So that's one way we get through that objection. Another objection is like, well, I could just list it with a realtor and do the same, you know, same thing myself. And yeah, that's true, Mr. Seller. You could list with the realtor, but then you're gonna have to deal with the realtors, you gotta deal with the inspectors, you gotta deal with the appraisers, you gotta deal with all the title. And most of the time, these people are calling us because they want the convenience. So we're just pitching that convenience to them. They're like, hey, you don't have to worry about realtors. You don't worry about the title costs, the inspections. You just sit back and collect your check and we'll do all the heavy lifting for you. And we're getting you your net number. All we need in return is a little bit of time. What is the largest wholesale deal you have ever done? It was $96,000 was our largest wholesale deal we've ever done. So I haven't quite hit that six figure yet, but it's going to happen. We have one right now. It's a novation though. And the novations, we're, we're projecting 120,000 on it. Um, it just got listed at the beginning of the week. 
and and Sebastian's already getting phone calls on it. Can you share your contract with us in PM if we PM you? I spend thousands of dollars on the contracts. I don't mind sharing some stuff with you, but even when I, I do share it with my coaching group, but even when I share it with them, I tell them please consult your attorney. I instruct them to draft up the contracts. That way I'm protected on my end. But yeah, hit me up on the side and then we can see what we can work out. Okay, anyone else got anything? Okay, I'll see any more questions coming in. I guess we're good then, right? I guess we're golden. Okay, might have been too short. I don't know. Maybe I could have gone a little deeper on oh, some I stuff. Think, but. I think uh, it works great. Um, how can we get? We got one in the chat. Uh, how can we get it on the wholesale list? On our buyer, if you're talking about our buyers list, just message me on Facebook, and I can put you into our investor list platform, and you can see our deals there. And what's great is uh, once we uh, onboard you onto investor list, then you're going to start seeing all the wholesalers deals who's on that platform. So it's a great place for buyers and for the wholesalers. It, put, it, it, it merges them together. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Okay, well, Corey, you're a rock star, man. Thanks for your time. We, we appreciate you coming out here and obviously giving us a bit of your wisdom and knowledge, so. Um, it, man. To, to everybody, we obviously recommend following Corey on Facebook, right? Uh, if you're interested in any of his uh, mentoring or any of that, uh, obviously PM him if, with any other you know comments or whatever you need, but follow him on Facebook. And then we also will be posting this um, in our Facebook group as well for any of those who, who want to go ahead and uh, and get started in that and review what's been said here. So thank you everybody for your time, Corey. Thanks, man. We appreciate yeah, you. Thank you. appreciate it, guys. Thank you. All righty. We'll talk to you later. Bye.